Hi there, my name is Greg Snell with UAV Coach, and this video is all about how to travel with your drone. We know that 2020 has obviously been a weird year, and many of us aren't even traveling at the moment. However, if things start to settle down, you'll probably want to get out and fly once again. And when the time comes, you'll be ready. Let's get started. <music> In this video, we cover a couple tips on how to travel with your drone, and those include how to research and understand different state and international drone laws, how to pack your drone, whether it's in a camera bag, a day pack, or a hard case. We'll go over a couple different ways that you can pack your drone safely, how to travel with LiPo batteries, especially on a plane, and then lastly, some general tips on bringing your drone on a plane. So first things first, what do you need to know when traveling with your drone? And that is drone laws, full stop. So let's take this video inside and review the UAV Coach Drone Laws directory. Drone laws and regulations differ from country to country, and sometimes even from state to state. But in most cases, the country's national or civil aviation authority will set and enforce the drone regulations. For example, in the United States, you have the FAA, which is the Federal Aviation Administration, and the FAA sets and regulates drone laws nationally. In Canada, you have Transport Canada Civil Aviation, which does the same thing. UAVcoach.com has a detailed blog post on drone laws and regulations in all 50 U.S. states, plus every single country in the world. It's linked in the description below. So if you want to find out what the different regulations are for wherever it is you're going to, just click on that link and you'll be able to find the information there. Another thing you might be interested in is the TSA, which is the Transportation Security Administration. In the United States, they control all of the security checkpoints in airports. And their policy is that you are able to bring your drone through the checkpoint. However, it's a little open-ended where they say, but any other further regulation is dependent on the specific airline that you're traveling with. And I believe that it is dependent also on the country that you're traveling to. So we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in this video. However, it's always about the civil aviation authority of whatever the destination is that you're traveling to. So it's important to research and understand their drone laws before you take to the skies. Next up are foreigner specific drone laws. So some countries require foreigners to have specific special permissions to be able to fly their drone in that destination, which their own citizens are not subject to. And then other countries have a flat out ban on drones. You can't even bring your drone through customs on arrival. A very good example of this is my own personal experience traveling to Morocco a couple of years ago. On arrival, I knew that I would need to leave my drone with the customs. So I made customs aware that I had the drone. They checked it in and then put it into this giant room, which was filled with like probably over $50,000 worth of DJI products. And, uh, and then they gave me this little form and said, when you come back to fly out of the country, present this form to the same customs office and we will retrieve your drone for you. That is exactly what happened. And when I flew out of Morocco, I had my drone back. So that's just an example of uh, you know countries that don't allow drones or they have a ban on drones. It doesn't mean they're gonna take your drone. It just means you need to be aware of what the uh, policy is on arrival and how to go about the uh, proper presentation of the fact that you may be uh, carrying a drone. The next tip under drone laws is to determine whether you're required to register your drone with that country's national or civil aviation authority. And this is important because if you don't do it and you get caught flying your drone in a foreign country, then you could be subject to fines or possibly uh, some other form of punishment, which you want to try and avoid, obviously. Next up is packing your drone for travel. And here we've got my primary day pack. This is my camera bag. It's the bag that comes with me on the plane, carry on when I'm traveling. And inside of the camera bag is an ICU, which is known as an internal camera unit. We've got a secondary one here to give you an idea of what it looks like. And I can swap out the ICU depending on the shoot and on the location where I'm working. Now for my primary ICU and my camera bag right now, I've got it set up in a way that will hold my stills camera, five different lenses, microphones, uh, GoPro, my drone, my extra battery, the controller, etc. And everything is separated by these foam inserts to keep it all safe and sound. Now this is how I personally like to travel with my drone and how I pack my gear for traveling. However, there are a couple different ways that you can pack your drone for traveling as well. And probably the most common would be a hard case. So there's many different types of hard cases that are designed specifically for your 
your drone model, whether it's the Mavic 2 Pro or the Zoom, or if you've got the Mavic Mini or the Air, or if you've got an Inspire, or if you've got the old Phantom series, whatever it is that you've got, you can find a hard case for that specific model online for sure. Now, hard cases are probably the most secure way of packing your drone for travel. The reason that I don't use one is because they take up too much space and I wanna have all of my camera gear with me uh, for carry-on when I'm traveling. However, if it works better for you, then a hard case is a great way to go. You can also get specific drone backpacks that are, again, are designed for this, the exact model that you have. And this is another good way to travel with your drone and to pack your drone for traveling. However, me personally, I like the ICU setup because as a professional, I've got all my gear with me at all times and it fits nice and snugly onto my back, even though it's really heavy. Next up is traveling with LiPo batteries, but before we dig into these, we need to explain what is a LiPo battery. LiPo batteries provide a higher specific energy than other lithium batteries and are specifically used in applications where weight is a critical feature, just like in drones. But why are there restrictions when traveling with LiPo batteries, especially on airplanes? It's because they catch fire. I'm sure you've heard stories of lithium polymer batteries catching fire and uh, creating some sort of damage. Hopefully nothing too serious. But in 2014, there was an international news story about an undeclared drone battery that sparked a plane fire in a Fiji Airlines flight out of Melbourne Airport in Australia. A failing LiPo battery can catch fire relatively easily and cause some serious damage. So it's really important that you're always inspecting your drone batteries, whether you're about to go traveling or you've just got it with you at home. Every few weeks, you wanna have a look at it, make sure that there's no puffiness, there's no gaps, there's no leaking. And if there are any irregularities, then that is toast. You want to dispose of it by following the proper procedures and get yourself a new drone battery ASAP. With all that being said, LiPo batteries will rarely spontaneously combust, and if it looks like it's in fine condition, then it's probably not going to happen. However, you want to be inspecting it to see if there are any of those irregularities, and if there are, dispose of it immediately following those proper procedures and get yourself a new drone battery because when you're traveling, you're probably going to want to bring your drone batteries with you. Now, from personal experience, I find it easiest to just bring all of your camera gear, including your drone and your extra batteries with you in your carry-on luggage when getting onto an airplane. This will ensure that you have all of your most expensive gear with you and you can monitor those batteries during the flight to make sure that they don't spontaneously combust. Now you can also protect your batteries when traveling. You can put them in a separate battery case or even in a hard case, or you can uh, put them in your ICU, which is an internal camera unit. As much as LiPo batteries are awesome for being able to power our drones while keeping the weight down, they are still relatively dangerous and need to be treated properly and with caution. Now it's time for some of our top tips on bringing your drone on a plane. First things first, you want to make sure that the drone is turned off and any of the switches are free from accidental activation. Then you want to consider getting yourself a drone carrying case. If you don't already have one, you get a hard case for your specific drone model or a backpack, or you can travel like me with a designated ICU that fits your drone, your controller, and your extra batteries. A good idea is to check with your specific airline as per their drone rules for both carry-on and check baggage, and definitely what their rules are for the LiPo batteries. Now, with that being said, my personal opinion is to just always take your drone with you carry-on. You can bring the controller as well, any extra batteries. It's just much easier. You know exactly where it is. You can have it with you in the camera bag or either in a hard case, whichever is easiest way for you to transport and travel with your drone. But definitely a good idea to avoid any confusion or any hassle is just have the drone with you in carry on on the plane. Our team at UAV Coach have created a detailed blog post that gives you even more information about traveling with a drone. It's titled The Ultimate Guide to Bringing a Drone on a Plane. Be sure to check that out linked in the description below. So from everybody here at the UAV Coach team, we're wishing you safe flying and blue skies.